Hey guys, uh, welcome back to the channel. Have an interesting video here. This is a 2003 5 Series BMW um, with a M54 engine. So this is a E39. Let me just put it right here. I had ESA connected and ready to go. Um, the only thing that I want to collect from here is actually the uh, smooth running values. I want to compare that information with the scope uh, capture. Uh, this time I'm using the ESCOPE um, with the H channel. I have one channel, uh, the yellow one, connected over to the crank sensor signal, right? The crank sensor, which is under the intake. And these cars are not so hard to get. Uh, hopefully you can see the uh, lead right there. I have no light. Let me just get a light. <clears throat> Yeah, now you can see it, so it's very easy to access in here. I have the other one, uh, channel B, or red channel, connected to coil number one uh, signal. When you're setting the scope for this, especially on the e-scope, you want to make sure um, first that you go to meter to make sure that you are connected. So you see all the rest of the channels are not connected. They got a red color on it, and the words are connected. They are reading value so it's nice about this scope it has a bias voltage it checks everything so we know that we are indeed connected uh, and then we can go over to here um, this is just if you were like to capture something in here what i'm going to use this time is in tools <clears throat> i want to get the ckp misfire test uh, this is the fire order for bmw 153624 i also recommend to check uh, the trigger or uh, to change the trigger to 8 volt or uh, 80 volts maximum uh, for channel 2 like that it will pick up this type of calls especially when they're cold they are multi-fire strike otherwise it will confuse the the algorithm in here all right so set an ista all i need to know uh, is the smooth running values and then we can run the car. Because I want to compare, you know, I never trust uh, what the scanner tells you as far as misfire three, two, whatever. I want to confirm that and make sure that I'm not um, going into a rabbit hole with an error on the scanner. All right, so we definitely have something going on in number three, a little higher. Um, it's hard to know what type of values are those. As BMW one divided by seconds a square. I don't know what that is though. But we can see compared to the other ones that indeed number three is a little higher. You'll see that these are very stable. So we're going to uh, gather the data for this. Again, you just click here. Let it record for a little bit. I would say maybe five seconds is good enough and then stop the recording. This is going to analyze the data. I want to make sure that this happens indeed. Make sure we got no trigger or CKP signal issues, which I doubt it, because we indeed have values recorded. <clears throat> and then we can analyze this information. Again, since it's like perfect, so this is nice because it gives you the firing order and then the speed of the uh, crunch position sensor. Yeah, we can definitely see here, I would say maybe two and three. All right, let me turn the car off so we don't need the car running more. <clears throat> All right, going into the data. What I like to use in here, sorry if we, we got glare, so as I'm going to first zoom out and then you can use the pen hand to move it anywhere you want. When you're working on ATS uh, ESCOPE, uh, you want to try to do that like that. You can zoom into the portion you want with a zoom window and then you can select everything. I will say maybe like this much, so that's perfect. Now, I mean, everything is still here, but you see how nice the waveform looks? It's because I zoom out and then I took the zoom window. Um, we can see the fire in order, one, five, three, six, two, four, and it repeats, right? Now we're gonna use the pen hand. Uh, we can definitely see that the indeed, number three, like right here. See, this is crank spinning up and then it's slowing down. It speed up, but then it slowed down, like not something happened in here. So we have six going up, 
up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. This time it worked. So the reason I'm doing this test is so somebody already uh, did the part scanning on this car, not us definitely. They put catalog converters, all the coils, all the spark plugs, uh, I mean, exhaust pipe. Uh, you can see the diverter valve and probably there, uh, the air pump too for, for that. Um, I mean, they have been doing a lot. I can see also a brand new mouth sensor. So somebody's been trying to get this to work. Uh, yeah, if you just throw parts out of a car, that ain't gonna fix the car. You need to get, you know, to gather data that will guide you through go, to, you know, to either a repair or requires, like in this case, I need further testing to go into in cylinder. I want to put, you know, an in cylinder pressure transducer and vacuum pressure transducer and then an exhaust pressure transducer to see what the engine overall health is. I'm going to do a relative compression since I have everything pretty much ready to go. The only thing I'm going to have to do is disable the fuel, which is pretty simple in here. I have, let me show you this tool. We have uh, in, in BMW, if you want to disable fuel, it's going to be very hard for these cars to go and find a fuel pump relay and all that stuff. The easiest way is on the fuel line right here. And this is a special tool, BMW tool. And I think I have the part number somewhere here. Let me see. I have been already, oh no, it's right here. Let me just try to read it. So let me see. A3300496567. And this is made in Germany for BMW. So what this will do, this is a two piece tool is right now together so this one will go into the fuel rail so no ripping and then the other one will go into the fuel line that comes from the fuel pump so i can disable the fuel pretty easy like that i mean literally three seconds same thing i use when i'm removing intake and you know all the fuel lines and everything i don't want to have you know fuel dripping in the floor and the smell of the fuel the fumes that you breathe you know but this is perfect so it's a great tool to have because i want to see um if we have a mechanical problem, or well, this is, you know, something definitely, I mean, he put all the coils and I can see that sometimes cylinder three try to work because if we see right here, it did uh, kind of a little bit in here, not too much in here. Again, cylinder three, cylinder three, like almost no, nothing in there. Again, this is the nice thing. This is almost a dead misfire right here. So we have to go backwards then because that was the last, the last of the capture. Sorry if I'm going a little too fast, but you know, it's very repetitious. I'm using this word because that's Bernie Thompson's favorite word, uh, favorite word when he's doing this. So we got to definitely, I mean, fire very repetitious in cylinder three. And we can see the up and downs on the crank sensor speed as, as normal, you know, during an idle. Nothing abnormal here, but then definitely three, 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 and sometimes other cylinders, not too much as cylinder three, but definitely I can see some others not contributing, uh, contributing as they should. And that's why, like, you know, right here, you see number one, uh, we got number three, number one, uh, again, number three, again, number one, you see how this one's going up, it just should have going up and then up and then down on three. So definitely we have something into one. A little bit again. But this time you see this is this is what you're expecting. Like let's say you know if you have a misfire on cylinder three only, like you had the misfire on cylinder three, it goes down and then six, two, four, one, five, and then down on three. See, all these were like like a step going up. That's normal behavior. Uh, not too much in here, but not so bad. This is still contribute, so this will not be considered a misfire. But that's why the smooth running uh, values, and that's why you know I, I like to compare to see if I can trust something like that because this is a 2003 vehicle. Uh, is data that is pretty old, so I want to make sure that what I'm reading is not processed data. It's my data. All right, guys, I'm going to stop the video one second here to put that fuel in there, and then we can do compression, which is again you can just go into tools. And then we can click compression. And nice thing about uh, ATS, it tells you what to do. All you need to do is, um, in this case, the trigger, we have it perfectly. And then use channel one 
to a 12 volt. So, and in this case, I have channel one going into the uh, crutch position sensor. So I don't really need to do that. I can just go over the battery voltage positive in here and then from four not there. So, um, yeah, let me disable the fuel. I'll be right back, guys. All right, I got everything ready to go. So we got now yellow channel, as they recommend you to do here, onto battery positive. Very nice on BMW. We have one right there. We got the ground on the ground port uh, post in the engine bay. And then we still got uh, these, you know, red channel on the coil number one. So we're going to, uh, it's not as, you know, it's not waste park. It's does have correct fire in order. And in the trigger level, I want to change that to 80. These for BMW, because I'm in the primary voltage in there. I'm not using a, you know, a E cup or nothing like that. So that's why I want to do this. So we're going to start the test and it's going to wait for the cranking. Uh, Steve, do you mind cranking this car for me? Just make sure, you know, accelerate to the, to the floor and then crank it. It's not going to start. I got the fuel disabled. Accelerate to the floor and crank it till I tell you. It's going to be more than eight seconds, okay? Yep. Good. Perfect. Uh, we can save the data. I do want to save the data. And I want to save it as... And this is in, I want to see where that is being saved. It looks like it's in an ES code folder. Perfect. Connect Intelligent Internet may find detector. Um, we don't want that. So yeah, definitely we have a mechanical issue on cylinder number three. So this is something that, as I said, you know, based on the waveform that we capture from the, um, crunch position sensor, we do have a mechanical issue, no doubt about it. So definitely we need to go in cylinder and with all the pressure transducer. All right, guys, uh, this will be, uh, not sure if I part one because I still got to get the approvals from the customer to proceed. Otherwise, I want to keep the videos as short as possible. So let's, let's do preliminary tests. Name this uh, first video, coming soon, part two. Talk to you later. Don't forget to subscribe. Bye-bye.